So what's all the excitement about probiotic right now? Well, it seems to be everywhere. As a matter of fact, by 2015, it's estimated that it's going to be a $31 billion industry. And that is food probiotics as well as supplement probiotics. As a matter of fact, food probiotics have really surged even faster. So there's a reason for this. There's more and more research coming out that probiotics can benefit people. And there's research linking it to autism and weight loss and all these different conditions. As a matter of fact, it is estimated by experts that these estimates of 31 billion are actually too low because they're saying with some of the new research that's about to come out and it's coming out now, it's gonna drive sales even further than that. So those estimates are low. Well look, one of the brand new research articles that was just published in Scientific America, I thought it really gives us a better look of probiotic. Matter of fact, I think it's gonna answer some of your question because a lot of people are spending money on probiotics, but the question is this, you know, is it worth it? Is my money spent on probiotics worth it? Well, that depends. That's why you need to listen to this video. Uh, because when we look at uh, probiotics, I have to be honest with you, I've never been a big fan. So I don't want to be the downer on the big probiotic boom right now. But you know, the type of conditions that I see with these really bad gut conditions that lead to other conditions, uh, probiotic just seems to not do that much, or at least it definitely pales in comparison to some other things. But look, the bottom line is this. I think that everybody can benefit from probiotics, so I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. However, to really fix these challenging conditions, to really make a difference in these challenging conditions, I think that we need something beyond probiotics. So let me tell you about this research and some of the new research. Number one, we realize that it's not just good guys versus bad guys, although that is part of it. But really, we know now that probiotic, or I, let me just restate it to this, this micro, these complicated microorganisms that are in our gut that really outnumber our cells 10 to 1, what well, we have a really cool symbiotic relationship with. Matter of fact, so much so that we learn now that these bacteria actually tell our genes what to do. So in science right now, there's a lot being taught about epigenetics or how our genes express themselves. And we're learning that it's not just, oh, you get the disease that your mother or father got. Well, we realize now it's our environment that literally can trigger these genes of susceptibility. Well, what some of this research is showing that we're actually sharing information with this ecosystem that's in our gut. So all these bacteria actually tell our genes what to do. As a matter of fact, a lot of the function at the cellular level that really we have as humans, for example, functions that tell our hormones what to do, or even how to make certain enzymes to break down carbohydrates, you know, a lot of this function we actually get because we're in communication with this bacteria. So therefore, we wouldn't have the function unless this bacteria that is in our little ecosystems in our gut tells our DNA what to do. So pretty complicated, isn't it? So in other words, now we're learning that conditions like obesity and autoimmune conditions, they, they have a lot to do with having a good number of bacteria in our gut or maybe not having enough. As a matter of fact, in the article they talked about, um, especially kids today, that they're finding that many of them are depleted in a type of bacteria called Bacteroides fragilis. Well, this one type of bacteria, by the way, you cannot get Bacteroides fragilis in any pill, powder, potion, lotion out there because it would not survive in that form. So Bacteroides, most of it we get from our mother. Matter of fact, uh, as we're being born, coming through you know, your mom's uh, birth canal, you're picking up her good bacteria. And a lot of the studies show that if mom doesn't have a lot of these good bacteria, baby doesn't either. And then that sets up baby for a lot of toxic conditions in a dysbiosis that leads to many other conditions. As a matter of fact, then the babies get vaccinated and all of a sudden these toxins, because the, the, the baby doesn't have good bacteria, aren't protected. And then it ends up affecting the baby's brain and it leads to autism or autism related disorders. And that's a theory that's out there and one that really holds up under scientific scrutiny. So there's many other theories though, show, stating that you know, a lot of the increase in C-sections has a lot to do with babies not having a good flora from the beginning, uh, as well as the overuse of antibiotics, as well as overuse of things like hand sanitizers and just too sterile of environments. So there's a lot of reasons for we're realizing that kids do not have some of these bacteria that we can't get in a pill or a powder like these bacteroides. So these certain specific bacteria, we know that they have a function in regulating our immune system, meaning that we literally cannot get 
a certain function in our immune system without these bacteria. So we know that these bacteria tell our genes and our DNA to produce something called T regulatory cells. And you know what these cells do? They actually downregulate inflammation. So there's things called T cells that raise inflammation, which is needed for a good healthy immune system. But our body produces something called regulatory T cells, which balance that inflammation. Well, today with the drive of autoimmune conditions and allergies and all of these types of um, really hyperimmunity states that we're seeing and the crazy peanut allergies, what's happening is, is we're learning now that we don't have enough of these T regulatory cells. And it's because of this bacteria, especially that our children are lacking. So you see this complicated relationship. And I think the point that I really want to drive home here is, is that you're not getting this from the probiotics that you're buying in the store. So what do we do? How do we get some of these brand new types of bacteria that we're realizing really play a significant role? Well, look, I'm a firm believer in getting these types of bacteria from natural sources. Uh, what type of sources? Well, fermentation. Fermentation is something, it's a lost art uh, that we used to do before refrigeration. We used to ferment vegetables and dairy products. Why? Because it would make them last longer without refrigerating them. Well, in that process, we would take the natural bacteria that are already there and create you know, literally trillions of good bacteria that we need today. As a matter of fact, the pills and the powder that you're taking right now as your probiotic, the best one, if you bought the best out there, you're getting 10, maybe 15 billion strands, colonies per serving. Well, to fix a really bad gut and to make a significant impact, you need 10 trillion or more. One serving of something that's fermented or cultured gives you at least 10 trillion per serving. See, otherwise you'd have to drink the whole bottle to even come close to that. So you're not going to do that. But the point is, is that we used to ferment and culture products and we would get trillions and trillions of these bacteria that we need. And we'd also are getting strains that we really can't put into a pill because they're in their natural environment when we ferment foods. Look, I'm a big fan of cultured dairy products, but the problem is, is that you're starting with a product that is inferior. You're starting with something that's pasteurized. Uh, you're starting with something that's been heated and denatured. And matter of fact, many, if not all, 99% of dairy in this country contains a protein called beta A1 casein, which I've talked about on some other videos, which is 23 times more toxic than gluten. So starting with a product like that, you're not gonna end up with a good uh, product, even if you do have you know, a good culture and a fermentation process. Now many of you say, well, what if I get raw dairy? Well, that's fine but most of it still contains the beta A1 casein. Well, look, I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer because you know, these types of products fixed my gut when I was very sick. Um, so I actually found a goat product that they fermented and cultured that was raw. Well, we can't get that product anymore and goat doesn't taste very well. There's a company called Beyond Organic that is making a product called Amasi and another product called Swearaviv or Swear Gold. It's the Swearaviv products that are cultured probiotic products that are not only from grass-fed cows, but cows that practice something called ultra-high density grazing. See, in this process, the cows are you know, really fertilizing the fields themselves. So they're urinating in this, the fields and you know, putting manure down in the fields. And I know that sounds gross, but a lot of these bacteria that I'm talking about, that they're talking about in the article, are going right down into the grass. The cows are eating it, then it gets through them. And then we're getting be able to drink these products or eat these products. Even their cheese contains so many different bacteria that we don't get. I, you know, we haven't even discovered them yet. Some of these bacteria, I promise you that. But the cheese in, from this company is not heated above the cow's body temperature, so these bacteria are able to live, and then we're able to benefit from them. You know, in a natural product, they're surrounded by certain fats and enzymes and protein with lactic acid that protects them to get down into the lower and colon where we actually really really need them and we're actually, they actually work. But really, we're able to get probiotic that, again, you can't buy. So when the cows eat this grass, they're getting all this new bacteria, you know, and it's cultured, and it takes off into the trillions. Look, it works. You know, when you put these type of bacteria in our gut, yeah, you know, we're addressing an epidemic. That's why sales are 31 billion or estimated to be, because so many gut problems in the United States. It's an epidemic, but again, Trying to get it from a pill or a powder is never gonna happen. We need these natural sources. Beyond Organic, I believe, is right now the best source of these products you can buy anywhere. You know, so look, I, you know, I don't know how you came to this video, you know, but talk to your doctor or talk to someone who led you here you know, and really get these sources. The Amasi, 
is one product. The culture actually comes from a tribe in Africa. It's an amazing source of probiotic. And again, when I say probiotic, I'm talking about strains you can't buy or put in another product. Uh, the Swear of Eve products is another source, and even the cheese. So look, you know, I, I use this with my patients. I've uh, seen um, absolute amazing results, and I know you will too. So you know, if there's one takeaway from this video, it's this. You know, you're not going to buy these type of probiotics in the store. And yes, probiotics can be beneficial. But to the level that most of you watching this need, you have to get in its natural form. You know, and Beyond Organic has done a fantastic job. I hope this changes your life. And stay tuned for some of the other videos we're going to do in this subject and some of the other bacteria. I think I uh, did a video on the Scientific America article. Look for that one as well. Great information, life-changing. Thanks.